Lord. We praise you right now because you are so worthy. We ask, oh God, that you will strengthen us right now. As we stand before your presence, oh God, we count the privilege and our honor to be found in the faith. Lord God, we thank you, hallelujah, for the strength that you have given us because you live in us. We praise you, Lord God, oh hallelujah, for being that comforter, that provider and that keeper. We ask even now, oh God, that you would clothe us in humility and use us to the best of our ability. Help us, oh God, to, to give you our best when we're in your service. Not only in preaching, but in holy living, oh God. Bless us, Lord, that we may be fit for the master's use of vessel of honor, profitable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Give the honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, to our diocese bishop and pastor, Bishop Roland Johnson. We thank God for the opportunity to serve on the battlefield with these anointed men of God, Elder Stallings, our assistant pastor, Elder Ward. Thank God for Elder Robinson, for Minister Walton and Minister Jackson. Hallelujah, Elder Henry, we thank God. Hallelujah for men that love God. We know the women love God, but we thank God for men that love God. Because it just seems like the devil want to just fight us tooth and nail to stay in the service. Hallelujah, brother, but it's easy when you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And we thank God for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Thank God for the youth and adult choir. Hallelujah. Give them a hand. Hallelujah. For the Lord using them on, on this morning to minister to the people of God. Hallelujah. I was in the back and um, I was praying and then I had got up and I was looking at my word trying to, trying to look at something in my word and then the the presence of God was so heavy out here. And, and heavy isn't a bad word as long as the word anointing follows it. So you have a heavy anointing. And, and I felt the presence of God in the back and I, I wanted to get out here to the front because y'all were having such a good time. <laughs> and I just wanted to join in in the praise and in the worship and hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing because people can have church when you're around. And people can have church when you're not around. God don't stop blessing just because you're not around. But he knows how to bless his people, whoever's around. And he can even go as far as uh, when nobody else around. I still bless you. And the choir said, I, I need a blessing, Lord. Like, please, don't, don't pass me by. And something about that song resonated in my spirit. Ah, because I need a blessing from the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So we solicit your prayers because I believe everybody want to be blessed. Yes. E even if you're not doing right, you, you just want to be blessed. <laughs> if you don't come to church all week, you, you just want to be blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. You ask anybody, you ask the drunkard on the street, do you want to be blessed? Sure. <laughs> blessing. <laughs> but we thank God. Hallelujah. For the word of God, we shall be coming out of the book of Daniel on this morning, Daniel, the first chapter, book of Daniel. We're going to start, we'll start at the fifth verse. Daniel, first chapter, beginning at the fifth verse.
We shall be reading down to the 17th verse. Then afterwards we'll read one, one verse in the 12th chapter of Daniel. And we'll give you that. that be Daniel 12 and 4. But right now. <clears throat> and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. And of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse like unto the children which are in the sword? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had sent over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Somebody say ten days. Yes. Prove thee thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us posts to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Mozart took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. In the 12th chapter. Daniel, he said, and Daniel had understanding 
and false visions and dreams. So we want to talk a little bit about knowledge. We want to use for thought, what have you learned? What have you learned? Because with learning should come knowledge. With knowledge should come wisdom. But all knowledge is an acquired with wisdom. What I'm saying is you can have knowledge, but you might not have wisdom. For the simple fact, you have to ask yourself, what do I have knowledge of? Because there's all kind of knowledge out there. What do I have knowledge of, and what have I learned? And when we talk about knowledge and knowing, we will have to go back to the beginning. And that will take us in the book of Genesis, the second chapter. When the Lord took Adam after making him, he put him in the garden of Eden. And you have to understand that not Adam had knowledge. He had, he had, he had knowledge. He didn't have all knowledge. But he had knowledge of who he was and what he was. He had knowledge of who God was. Hallelujah. He, he even had knowledge, enough of knowledge to name all the animals. Hallelujah. He had uh, enough of knowledge and God had gave him knowledge of a tree called life. The tree of life. But then God gave him also the knowledge of a tree called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he had knowledge of the tree. He just didn't have the knowledge of what good and evil was. Hallelujah. So with that, that knowledge, hallelujah, he had to obey God. And, and God was so good. And, and what he gave Adam, he even gave Adam the knowledge of the consequences of not obeying him. He didn't just say, don't do that. And you say, why? And he do like we do. He say, because I said so. <laughs> he turned around and he gave him knowledge of why not to do it. So he already had knowledge. He just didn't have the knowledge of what the tree of. Anyway, he got something else too. And knowing that that was the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, it turns out that hallelujah, that, that that tree of knowledge also turned out to be the tree of death. Because when eating from that fruit, death was birthed into the world through his disobedience. So now you have the knowledge, hallelujah, of what the tree of knowledge of good and evil really is. And then you have the knowledge of the tree of life. Hallelujah. So, Adam, what have you learned? Hallelujah. One thing that if, if Adam could be here today, he, he probably would say, I learned that it's best to obey God. Because <laughs> now we see the ramifications of his disobedience. Hallelujah. And then we go further and we move into the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. And we see an act of judgment has taken place in Jerusalem by a notorious conqueror named Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar went into Jerusalem and he ransacked the city. The Bible says that he went into the house of the Lord and he just took all the gold. And he didn't stop there. He went into that and he took the best of the best when it came to the people. Hallelujah. He saw, hallelujah, Daniel and he saw Daniel's friends. And hallelujah. And you have to remember, he didn't just take four children. <laughs> he, he took a bunch. He took the best of the best. It's just that the other four children, and they were children, the four children just stood out. But he took more than just four children. He took the best of the best that was learned, and the Bible says in science, and so that he can, he can allow them to stand before him in a matter of three years. So he was grooming them, grooming them to the palace. Hallelujah. But before they got to the king, got to the palace, before they had got to Babylon, before they were enslaved in, into captivity, they had learned something about God. 
Hallelujah. They were taught about Jehovah before the captivity ever took place. Uh, hallelujah. Even so much so that captivity might have taken hold on them physically. They were slaves. But it couldn't take hold on them mentally or spiritually. Yes. Hallelujah. Even to the point, hallelujah, that, that the king said it in grooming them, I, I want to give them my meat. And I want to give them my word. Yes. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that Daniel had purpose in his heart. Yes. Hallelujah. He had already made up his mind. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. I might be your slave, but if I don't want to eat it, I'm not going to eat it. Keep your undercooked feeling and yawn to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep your crystal and your wine and your whatever drinks to the shop. Because I learned something from my fathers and forefathers that when it comes to serving God, he said to not worship another God. But they tried so much to incorporate them into their system to the point that they changed their names. Changed Daniel's name to Belshazzar, yes. which means favor of Bel, which was the Babylonian idol god. But, but his name was Daniel being interpreted means God is my judge. Hallelujah. So he knew who would judge him. He knew who his keeper was, who his deliverer was, who his comforter was. Hallelujah. So he said, I, I don't want to eat the king's meat. I don't want to drink the king's wine. Now, some of us would have passed on the meat but kept the wine. <laughs> but then we passed on both. Hallelujah. He said, he just tried me for 10 days. And, and, and I thank God for the brother because he had three more friends that, that, that said, oh, we we, we going to do the same thing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, we, we don't want no meat, none of your meat. And we don't want none of your wine either. Just give us the pulse, the vegetable, or the beans. And we'll drink water. Hallelujah. We might not like water, but we'll drink water when it comes to drinking wine. Hallelujah. Because we, we, we have faith in God. We believe, hallelujah, that if, if we could just trust in God, that he will deliver. The Bible lets us know, hallelujah, that, that they had gained knowledge and wisdom and all learning because of their sacrifice within that 10 days. Hallelujah, they didn't just give up what they gave up for nothing. Because we like to say, you can't beat God given. And they're giving up the meat and they're giving up the wine and they're holding to their culture and to their religion and to their God. The Lord turned around and he blessed them with wisdom and, and he gave them knowledge and understanding and hallelujah because Daniel took a stand. Uh, the Bible says that he gave them an interpretation of, of visions and we know that he knew how to interpret dreams. Uh, hallelujah because he decided to, to stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah, because he decided to take a stand. I, I might be a young person. I, I might be a child. But I know what I've learned. I know what mommy and daddy taught me. I know what my pastor and the deacon taught me. And I'm going to stand and to fast to what I have learned. So what have you learned, Daniel, in the space of 10 days? I learned that if I sat the Lord can turn around and bless me. That's why I'm reminded of the word of God. To tell me, is he she therefore brethren? By the mercies of God. To present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Then you have the sight to be a living sacrifice. When it came to God. But when it comes to serving God. It's a sacrifice. Into knowing God. We can come to the church to learn the Bible. Come to Sunday school to learn the word. But you don't really get to know God until the lights go off. Until the doors are locked. And then it's time to leave the building. That's when you really get to know God. But Hosea, hallelujah, made a proclamation in the fourth chapter, in the sixth verse, he said, hallelujah, my people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. And the Bible says, in that same verse, 
don't like it. But we don't want to know him or know about him. So Peter picked it up and he told us to be steadfast. Oh, don't be like the wicked. You have to hold firm to what you have. You don't want to slip up and you don't want to fall down. So be steadfast and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take your yoke upon me and learn of me. That's what he said. The Lord wants us to know about him. He wants us to have a relationship when it comes to learning about him. And sometimes the best way to learn about God is going through a storm. I know we don't like storms. We want the sun to shine all the time. My God, we want to have a beach mentality when it comes to the blessings of God. But you can't really get to know God until you come through the storm. Somebody said, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God.
talk about evil. Because we were talking about the knowledge of good and evil. You talk about morally bad or wrong or wicked or harmful or wickedness and sin. You can't talk about evil without talking about the devil. And one thing you must know about the two is that you can't mix water with oil. You can't mix church in the club. You can't mix ammonia and bleach. You can't mix God and the devil. You can't mix the saint and the sinner. Oh, y'all getting quiet. Acknowledges God, then I say there is something different about that brother. 